tonight. We've been talking about getting together and having an incredible conversation. I want you guys to come on in and join us because I know tonight we're going to talk about some things that need to be discussed, should be discussed. And many of us have had these discussions, uh, maybe in our private spaces. But tonight I want to bring it to the platform. And I'm so excited to have these wonderful, I'm telling you, powerful agents of the Lord on here with me tonight. And so we want you to take a moment on all of our platforms. We're sharing this. And we want you guys to come on and join into the conversation tonight um, as we merge and talk about the generational gaps, how we're moving forward to get some things accomplished together, what is necessary that we need to be equipped with, what are those tools, and what is happening in the world today that we need to be in tune in prophetically, that we need to be equipped with, okay? And so tonight, we're going to have those conversations. I want to welcome all of you guys. Let me see who's coming on with us tonight. I want to thank you guys for joining us because tonight is going to be fire. So we want you to go ahead and go and invite um, others to come in and join us and be a part of this conversation tonight. Come on in, y'all. Come on in. Come on in. Wherever you're coming in from, I see y'all showing up tonight. Can you make us, um, do us a favor and just go in and invite, just start sharing, just start sharing with everybody. Um, get everybody on here tonight. Cause I got, I got Shambrea. I got Jordan. Listen to me. I got the prophets of the new era with us tonight. The apostles that are moving in power and um, Henry Talbert, Pastor Henry, you know, I don't know. He caught up in here with all these prophets and apostles. So we know there's a prophetic edge on him, right? And so um, we're excited because um, he keeps all of us together in many things that he does to make sure that we are being operational in what we do on these different platforms. He is the, the strategic mind behind the communication airwaves and the frequencies and the platforms that we're building. It's been Pastor Henry Talbert that has helped us to move into these spaces to get what we need to get to people at large. So we want you to go ahead and share tonight. I'm excited, guys. Thank you all for coming in with me tonight. Oh, my goodness. I believe God is going to move powerfully um, tonight. And so I just want to take a moment. Can you just say hi to the people, guys? Uh, Prophet Jordan, can you say hi to them? Go ahead and greet your audience. Hello to everyone who's watching um, on Prophet Jordan Bryce on YouTube and from Nova Hub Church, the Nova Hub members and JBC Ministries. I love you. Uh, make sure you share with somebody. Um, everyone knows that Apostle Cynthia is my auntie. Uh, Pastor Henry is my brother and Chambray is my sister. So you guys need to get on. We all know that they're powerful voices and that every time they speak, our lives are changed. So share with somebody and it's going to be great. Okay, so y'all know tonight it's a family thing, amen? So tonight we're just going to share, we're going to have some conversations, and um, I just wanted to, to move in that direction, and I want to welcome all of you guys. Welcome all of you who are part of his audience. And so, Chambray, can you just say hi to everybody? Prophet Chambray is on with us tonight. She's a powerful, I mean, God is moving. I'm watching what God is doing in this new era and how he's raising up these power balls, a power, 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 when I say power balls, with these powerful voices that God is raising up in this hour to be used for him. And Chambray, we're excited for what God is doing in your ministry and with your life. Can you go ahead and say hi to your audience tonight that's listening? Yes. Hello, everybody. I'm so grateful to be on this platform with all of these amazing uh, men and women of God. Um, special shout out to all of my friends and family, um, our gifted family uh, all over the world. Um, love you guys so much. Blessings. I'm just really excited for what God is about to do tonight. All right. She said all over the world. Did y'all get that? Globally. <laughs> International. Global, international, global. Come on, she said all over the world. Okay, I need y'all to he hear, chime in, and know we are here tonight. <laughs> I love it. Girl, you my type. Hallelujah. I love you, Shadrach. Okay, so what about Pastor Henry? Can you just go ahead and give a shout out to your audience tonight? Listen, I just want to go ahead and say, I don't know how I got on this panel with these powerhouses, <laughs> you know, especially with Jordan Bryce. Like, I'm just glad to be in the oh, service Lord. one more time, as we used to say. <laughs> Uh, but look, one did the devil for us tonight. You coming out tonight? I'm gonna tell you right now. We be delivered tonight. You're in staying in tonight. <laughs> listen, you I'm, I'm wild I'm, tonight with us. I'm telling you, I'm excited to have this conversation because I know every time Apostle Cynthia and I have been doing some stuff together, and every time we have a conversation, you know, it always goes into the future of the church. We're talking about one thing, but it goes into something else. And it really just feeds that apostolic urge in my heart. And, yeah. uh, and so I'm excited to just 
be on a panel like this so we can talk about it, flesh it out, and uh, and really rest with some so many of the things that are the reality of the church right now. So I'm excited to be here. Looking forward to getting into this convo. Okay, so then guess what? On that note, you brought us right into it. You know, that's what y'all, that's what you do. You always setting us up to go have a conversation. <laughs> so you brought us right into it. And so um, I want to welcome all of you guys. I want to welcome you, those who are my friends and followers and students and those at large that have been able to sit at the feet of all of us apostolically, prophetically, to glean, learn, and grow, and know that the power of God is moving in such a way that he's moving now. And I believe we're seeing such an accelerated force because we're coming together. We're seeing the generational. We're seeing the multi-generational uh, movement of God where he's bringing us and merging us, right, together to flow in such a way of power because there's wisdom. Uh, uh, there is knowledge. There is process instructions that is in the mantles of many. There are those that know when to pour, how to pour, how much we should pour. And then there's those that have been given to help teach, instruct, and train another generation. I'm on the platform tonight. You know, I was saying this. I said this to uh, uh, to another young prophet I, I met recently. I said to her, and she's moving in power too. I said to her, I said, you know, at first I didn't know if I was going to like y'all. You know, I was trying to figure I was going to like these millennials, like these generation X, Y, Z, you know, that knew all the answers and didn't have the questions, you know, and how y'all moving and y'all y'all speed of how y'all moving, how you do things. But I've come to realize that the language I had for years, guys, that um, I would um, God would download me things and I would have understanding of knowledge and um, just things that was spiritual intelligence yet for years. And the people that I was talking to didn't have no understanding of what I was saying. And so I would hold back, guys. I would just be like, let me go to church and let me do the church thing. You know, we got to jump and shout and make everybody feel like everything is wonderful. And then you got to keep building them up and tell them how great and wonderful they are. And I said, well, I'm going to go to church and I'm going to do that part, right? Because if you don't do that part, then nobody's going to clap. Nobody's going to say praise the Lord and everybody's going to look like you. They want to throw eggs at you. Because one of the things I do know about the prophets and the prophetic mantle that we carry is that it's called to mess up the status quo. You know, prophets just step into the scene and just mess up stuff. You know what I'm saying? Soon as you think you're doing it one way, God shows up and say, that's not the way I want it done at all. You know, and then they overturn. He comes these apostles, overturning, uprooting, tearing down, destroying, and establishing what it is God is plowing through the prophetic scope of what he wants to get accomplished. And so for years, I just tried to find, you know, my fitting, my tribe. What, what does that work? And I remember the Lord saying this to me, guys. He said to me one day, I was in church. I started a school because I needed someone to talk to. I needed somebody that would be interested to hear what I was hearing. And I can share that with. And so I started doing the school. And then I started writing curriculum. And I said, I know people want to know what I know. I don't want to just give them things to fill in the blank. I want to provoke minds to think like prophets. I want to provoke a mind of a, of a people that will come into a place where they're spiritually hungry and they begin to seek out God for his mind, not just give an answer from Webster or what we can click a button to read, but what is in your belly? What does God put in your reservoir? What are you getting out of your time with God or an agent for God? So I started that and I started that school in 2006, guys. And so when we started those schools back then of teaching and training and trying to bring up and find those who was probably like me, that was sitting in church and having visions and dreams and seeing beyond and people be talking to you, you hear beyond, you know what I'm saying? Because you hear the hurts, the hurts, the hopes, the dreams, you hear all of this stuff. And so um, I just was trying to figure out, was I crazy or was I just strange or was there any, any other people that hurt like me? And I heard God say to me, he said, on the heels of what you see, he said, I'm raising up a generation. He said, and they might not, may not be the people that you see before you today. But on the heels of them, there's a generation. Then what I came to find out is that I had a Samuel's mantle. And then I knew from Samuel's mantle that it was a part of his responsibility to create schools, to educate the sons and daughters who were the prophets. These were the prophets, the sons and daughters of the prophets. And I knew that God was saying a generation will come along, that they will be now able in the days of reset what he was doing bringing now, chronicalizing things back into order, chronicalizing, he was chronicalizing the, the mind of God, putting it back in order because everything was out of order. So we're seeing those days reappear. So you see the Samuel Mantles that have built schools of education and training to say it's important for us to bring things back into divine order. And so I knew that my mantle was that, I knew that I needed to create a school for that, but I was waiting for the generation that I was called to train in that, okay? And yes, there was still and yes, we've seen many that have come forth, of course, 
that have walked in power and strength. But I see now another generation that God is raising up and you are our kids. These are our sons and our daughters that have been birthed out of those streams of the prophetics in us that are coming forth now in such a time, oh my God, to minister God's wisdom, God's greatness, God's strength, okay, in order, right? Back to the pure places of God in the earth. And so I'm excited because when I asked you all to come on here with me tonight, I wanted to talk about those things. I wanted to say that I'm open. I love you all when I thought I wasn't. I recognize that. Guess what? You are part of my tribe, my wound, my belly. I've been praying for y'all to get here. And so I'm excited for the future, what the church looks ahead, because you've given me hope. You've given me myself as God's apostle that there is a continuum and there is a proper succession, I believe, that God is raising up now that we can pour back into and trust the, fu the future generations to be okay because they're sitting up on the mantle, I believe, that is going to move in such... Um, such, I think such oneness, that word, I think such precision. He said an army was coming that will walk in synchronization and not break rank. And so we know that these are the days that we're in. So on that note, uh, Pastor Henry, let's go here. Let's start this conversation tonight. Can you start us out? We want to talk about tonight, what does it look like? Because you mentioned something earlier about um, the church and having these conversations that will uh, provoke um, people who are maybe stuck in maybe a church mindset or church anity, as uh, one of my mentors call it, you know, church anity, and not operating in apostolic Christianity. What does it look like today in your generation? Your generation. All of these are, are some of the next generations that are being raised up. I mean, I don't think nobody on this platform is 40 yet. And so um, what we're talking about is that being able to, to, to really interpret what does spirituality look like to you? What does church look like to you in this new era? Because we're needing to find out what is church? Why do we need to go to church? What is it all about? Absolutely. Um, thing, okay. Yeah. I think I think it's very clear that the church is in a very serious transition point. Is, is that we're at this real transition point. You do Why is this, he breaking up? This kind of thing that's between generations. Can you hear me okay? You breaking up a little bit, Pastor. I'm not sure. Can you hear him? I hear is you that him? Is that him? Okay. Can you, you all hear me just fine? Uh, you're kind of breaking up for us a little bit. Yeah, you're kind of breaking up on my end too. Okay, let me see if I can work it out. You can uh, jump to me, Jordan. And I'll come back. Should I come back to you as you say you work it out? So why don't you pick it up, Prophet Jordan? Um. Well, honestly, um, the purpose of church really has never changed. Um, I think first thing we have to understand that the church is an ancient entity um, and God was fully aware um, of the process of time when he established the church. When God came up with the idea of church, he knew about the 60s, the 70s, the early 2000s. Um, and so we have to understand it's a, it's really an eternal structure. And um, I think one of the th reasons why we don't really understand church in this generation is because we're trying to approach something eternal with a contemporary or a temporal mindset. Um, and so when we look at the church, we really have to um, view it from the perspective of an eternal mindset. And um, the purpose of the church, from what I understand, <clears throat> is one, for the sake of community. That's you know one of the, the basic, simple parts of community. The church will always be a source of community for those that come into it. It's the it's it's where we bounce ideas off of each other. You know, the word ecclesia, obviously in the Greek, um, is a governing body. Um, and if you would go into culture, you would understand that um, that it wasn't just a group of people that governed together, but they would argue together. They would they would um, they would uh, almost in a sense debate each other, and they would govern the the city or the region that they were given jurisdiction over um, by way of their conversation. So um, I think it's important that we understand that the church. Is body that is brought into a place of conversation. So we should be able to talk about things um, in church that we really aren't able to talk about anywhere else. And I think that's where the church has kind of lost her inheritance is because we made it nothing but preaching, nothing but teaching, singing, and dancing. But the church really is the source of God's education in the earth. And it's really the system that God has established for us to be able to have these hard conversations. Really, and, and honestly, if the church was operating at full capacity, um, 
Honestly, parents should be able to go to the church to help them with sexual education for their children. And, you know, like I said, I don't want to get too in the, in the nitty and gritty, but if the church was really operating at her full capacity, the world systems would not be educating our children. Um, and, and we wouldn't have to almost in a sense, uh, 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 unravel the indoctrination of our children um, in today's point uh, in society. So I would say community education and also for the sake of covering um, for, you know, because I, here's the thing when it comes to Christianity, every Christian needs to be able to point to someone that is responsible for their soul. And that is the purpose of the church. Now it can look different in today's point of view. It can look, it can be online. I'm kind of rambling at this point. It can be um, uh, a, a, a brick and mortar structure, but what we have to understand that the church is a source of covering. Um, the Bible talks about obeying those that have rule over your soul. So if you are in Christ, there should be somebody who has divine rule over your soul and has to give an account to God as to what they did with your soul. So that's kind of my opening thoughts. Um, um, where do I see church going? I see church um, fulfilling its ancient call and really going back to the original mandate that Christ gave us in the beginning. Okay. All right. That sounds good because guess what? You, you're stirring up some other things because um, we start talking about that. I just had so many thoughts going through my mind, but I'm not going to go to that thought yet. I just want Pastor Henry to come back in. We got you back in now and give your point on what you think okay, on that subject. Is that Are we still you still break them off. All right, let me try. I'm going to go out and come back in. And just go out and come back in. Okay. Well, okay, let's bring Shop Prophet Chambray in here. <laughs> let's hear because you got a real fresh, um, I think, perspective. You guys have come along in a time where, um, I, I don't know if you grew up in church from a baby. I don't know if your parents were called into ministry and you kind of got ushered in, you know what I'm saying, to seeing some aspects of church still functioning, right? The way in which we've known modern church to function. Mm -hmm. Now that we've seen a reset and what's coming into this era, there are a whole lot of new things that are happening. And I think Jordan was stirring some stuff in me. But can you just share your point and your perspective on that, Chambray, how you see that church, how you see the church in this era? Absolutely. Um, you just said, you just um, told my whole life story. I was born and raised um, in the old school Pentecostal church. Um, I was actually born up in the Jamaican tradition of, of church. So I have like that different perspectives. Uh, my grandfather is a bishop. My dad is a pastor. Um, so I've I've come up in a ministry family and I grew up really old school. Um, so a lot of the conversations around the prophetic, uh, I was never exposed to that growing up. Um, but what I what I see now is that um, God is moving in a in a in a direction of newness. He is bringing the church into a place where um, we are not hidden or ignorant to his moves, to what he's doing, to what he's getting ready to do, how he's doing certain things. And so now we have the opportunity to actually be on the cutting edge. Uh, one of the things that we used to irritate me growing up was that it seemed like we were the last people to ever uh, know about things or do things as the church. We would be on the back end of the of progression, of advancement. Um, we would be on the back end of everything. And so we would be paying catch up with, with the rest of the world of trying to be, you know, relevant. Uh, and I always believe that if we were really connected to the spirit as the Bible commands us to be, then we would be on the forefront and we would be actually leading the world in progression and advancement and moving forward in, in certain aspects. And so I, I believe that the church is really resetting its place back to its New Testament origins. Uh, I believe that wherever a church is, it signifies the establishment of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the entire reign of God. Everywhere that God has rule over is his kingdom. And so in the natural and in the spirit, the church being in a particular geographical location signifies that God's kingdom is active in that place. Uh, yeah. So as Prophet Jordan said, uh, wherever we find a church, we should be finding the kingdom of God having influence, um, having voice, having power in that specific place. 
Um, and that is something, you know, personally that I didn't grow up understanding. You know, I just thought that the church was just this, this secluded group of people that operated in a very antiquated uh, way. Uh, but I, what I've come to realize as I've grown in the prophetic and grown in my relationship with the spirit is that the church is designed to be leading the world in every area of advancement. So even as Prophet Jordan mentioned about um, our children being educated by the church, uh, more than that, our governmental systems being being um, advanced by the church, techno technological advancements being made by the church. You know, so I believe that what God is doing now is that He's bringing us to a place where we have true New Testament influence, where we're able to see. Uh, we're able to see not only the supernatural miracle signs and wonders, but we're able to see people's lives impacted in the way that it was in the New Testament, where people would see the church, uh, hear of men and women of God in their city and in their town, and know that there was something happening in that place. Um, and so that is what I'm really excited for. I'm grateful to be in a in a time period where the church is going through this transformation, going through this metamorphosis, and to make way for generations to come to really be able to stand on the word of God in that capacity. Um, but I also believe as, as someone who is, I, I, I often say that I'm like, I'm I have a really old soul. So I'm kind of caught between uh, many generations. <laughs> I also believe that um, there is a sacredness that we are receiving as young uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. I believe that there is a there is a sacredness and an ancient way that we are receiving, where the power um, and the devotion, the discipline of the ones that came before us, we are receiving that impartation to be able to not only talk about a new thing, but to be consistent in seeing it come to pass, not being right. weary well doing, but actually having that heart to say, no matter what happens, I'm going to keep on doing this, keep on going. Because that is something that I believe that the that the older saints had and that we are now becoming partakers of, which is a, a really great thing. That's good. You know, that's real good because um, a couple of things you said that was just like, uh, it's very important to take note of a couple of things, because I believe that when we start talking about being able to hold something true to its purpose, you know, it's going to take us being measured in the proper standard, in the proper sound, in the proper understanding of what that is. The only reason why many people who have gone to church to do church and thought church was just for the individual when it was a place for us to gather. I love the word community, government. It is a governmental headquarters. As a matter of fact, it is a stronghold that is an exchange place, a portal, a gate, for God to be able to bring things from the heavens into the earth. And he uses our lives. Once we come into understanding prophetic intelligence, which is my next book I'm releasing in a few moments. Oh, add, can you get Henry added? Please bring Pastor Henry back in. Um, Prophet Jordan, can you do that? I, I don't think I have that ability on this one. Okay, let me see. So, you know, I don't know how. Let's see. How do we get you back in here, Pastor? I'm can thinking... I was thinking we uh, I, we send him the link. I think he just has to click the link to get back in. You got to help me, y'all. Y'all you, you, young people got to help me. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I rely on you, nephew, to help me. <laughs> do you see his? Do you see his? Um, his like on your on the side of your screen? Do you see all of our faces? Do I do. I do. What do I do? Um, I there should be like a little button where you can switch, and he'll can. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I need you, girl, in my life. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor awesome. Shandra. Okay, do we get a fix? Okay, okay, now you sound much better now. Welcome back. Beautiful. Welcome back, Pastor. Listen Come for on, a moment. Let me, just, let me just thank God and let me bring the people that are listening into what we're talking about tonight. I thought it'd be fitting to bring us together to have a conversation. Of course, we're coming into our apostolic and prophetic intensive. It's something we do every year here. Um, God gave me a mandate for it in this particular area in South Florida. It is right here in Boca Deerfield, Boca, I call it Boca Deerfield, Boca Raton, Deerfield Beach, Florida, where we house our hub here. And one of the things we've done as a stronghold and a, um, a place that is an operational center is that we've always treated 
we've always equipped and educated people in understanding the power gifts. And what has been missing from the church for forever that I think has has caused us, like you were saying, Prophet, Prophet um, Chambray, you were saying that we've not been able to keep things to its original pattern of holding it, you know what I'm saying, of making sure that this thing is operating, uh, past Prophet Jordan, to the original intent of God. You know, we if we leave things, eventually we fall away because we start falling away from who God is. And so now we are saying this is the day and the hour that God is recovering. God is never going to lose. I'm going to tell you right now, he's not losing his world. He's not losing humanity. He's not losing his church. Why? Because we are the church. He assigns us to a church. And when we understand the intelligence of the prophetics that we're talking about, and we're going to be dealing with this guy so much in this intensive coming up September 1st through the, uh, through the 5th or 4th. If you haven't registered, you need to register. I think we're going to have information throughout this whole conversation. But this is about us being now able to sit into the pure streams, to understand why you have visions and dreams, to know that God didn't just save you to sit in the chair, to know that from the beginning of time, you have everything in you to walk in authority and rule back in the earth. The only thing you're not knowing and understanding is who you are by divine spiritual identity so you can walk in spiritual dominance. He said, take dominion. And yeah. so you don't have to be a prophet to do that, but you're going to have to be spiritual to do that. And so what we need is spiritual equipping, spiritual understanding, and those who are prophets who have been, been worn out through life. Some of our apostles, we lost our ways. And so we have another generation that is joining with us. And what you guys have is energy. You have that uh, that fire on you. You know, Some people have been out here for a long time and they're needing to be refreshed. They're needing to feel the rain again. They're needing to know that God has not forgotten his purpose for church or why he's using them to do church. And so uh, I, we, we just going to flow in this conversation and continue because what she said tonight with her little, uh, I think you and Prophet Jordan, you know, his parents, he was raised up out of an apple mother and grandmother out of a house that was moving in power. You know, that's why y'all meet together and make sense. You were our babies, our little genius spiritual babies that was in the womb being incubated to come forth for such a time as this. And we're excited about what God is doing in your lives in this season. Pastor Henry, welcome back. We want you to jump into because I know you're about to burst out of that chair to tell us what God is saying to you. So can you please chime in here and tell us your perspective in this? Yeah, absolutely. I love what both of them shared. Um, what I was going to say is I think the church is definitely at a transition point where we see these two generations converging. And, and I think one of the challenges that I see, and this is why I have such a burden for this conversation, is I think the future is going to be realized either by design or by default. And I see so many circles where default right. has been the way that we lean and we're reactive versus proactive. And, and one of the looming things that I see that I really believe that our generation has to rise to the occasion for is I think the church is headed for a leadership crisis. I think in the next several years, there are going to be more vacancies than there are prepared leaders to step into them. Um, even just today, I, taught, I spoke with leaders from five different churches. Four of them have leaders who are ready to quit and they have nobody to pass the baton to. Yeah. And so I think one, when Jordan talks about the educational center of the church, it just draws me back to my upbringing. I came up with a Sunday school and I came up with education. I came up with all those things. And I just feel like the church didn't realize when it gave up on discipleship, it gave up on leadership development. Oh, and so wow. while there are pockets of leaders like these young leaders who are on this call, this isn't the norm, right? This isn't the, the norm. And I don't think it, it has to be or it's going to be. I think we're going to see a greater wave of leaders who are comfortable saying, we're not just going after the mountain of religion. We're going after the, the, mountain, the mountain of education and entertainment and all those different things. And I think that's what the future is going to look like. Uh, but my concern yeah. is that we do need leaders in the church who care about the kingdom and not just their church. We've got to have more leaders who see how we all fit together and not that we're to see that we're not competing with each other, that every church in America could be full and there will still be people who can't get in. Right. To understand that viewpoint, but to say, hey, look, for the sake of the kingdom, we've got to drive this thing ahead. And so there's a real conversation uh, about how do we take a culture where we've seen leaders who stay too long, who are now being forced to stay longer than they want to, uh, because now there's not somebody behind them who wants to receive what they're passing off. And so I think that's a part of this whole conversation as well, is that we've got to talk through transition. <laughs> and what for each generation to play its part in the kingdom. Okay, see, Shadow, just just be quiet. Just go and be quiet, okay? We already see you stirring up stuff. 
Listen, listen. So that means that, listen to this. I saw you shaking your head. <laughs> listen, listen, guys. So that means that we must build back as we see things being torn down. It's some things God want to never see again, okay? Because it was restrictive, okay? And what people built up under their own mindset of interpretation of God's spiritual operations. But I think we're going to have to build back up under apostleship. Only apostleship, whether you're a pastor, they say, well, how does this work? We're talking about hubs. We're talking about building now. What's ahead? What's the future? What does those models look like? Some people are stuck because they have no prophetic uh, perspective and what to build back with. You know, we're needing now. We're going to see. God said, I'm going no further without my militaristic branch. And why? Because we're in days of war. We're in days of birthing and building. And you need apostles who can identify gifts and people. Only apostolic people can press to a measure where we're able to identify the gifts. And we're not stuck because apostles and those who are moving, that's why their team horses, apostles and prophets, who are moving in that type of militaristic force out of the government of heaven, they're in this thing for the government of God. They're in this thing for kingdom purpose. They're not stuck to one locale. They're itinerant. They're making sure they're building what God wants. Now, there are some that are called locally to take on that post in a local congregation or a house or territory. That's that's we all have different types of uh, spheres and God give us all different types of rounds, right? To to operate one round to operate out of it, but other places are spheres of do domains, right? So what we are finding is that we have an identity crisis, guys. We have a crisis with um, those who may be leaders but they can't see themselves in this future. They can't see what they have in them. How does that fit in what they do see called the church, right? Because that breed of you guys that are being raised up, people are frustrated because they don't see movement. And when you are kingdom and you're prophetic and apostolic, your the reason why you have that, your purpose is to bring the church into a movement. It is to bring things in the earth into moving, right? With what God is moving in and moving with so it can stay in sync with glory and creation. And so you're finding a lot of people who have been sitting in a building trying to do what they believe church is and another breed that has come along and those that have been there that is frustrated because some have been there and they've been waiting for the shift and they don't know what that looks like. But if to walk away, like you said, Pastor Henry, where are the leaders, the leaders that are frustrated, the leaders that are quitting, the ones that are saying, I can't go any longer. Where are the leaders that can be identified now that says that they have enough in them spiritually to birth and build back with, right? That is going to be oil to pour, like we're pouring tonight. And then those that now can receive the pour to run around, uh, run along with them for secession for what is next. Chambray, you had your you had your head shaking. I, I want you to jump in here. Oh Lord, everything that Pastor Henry said just resonated so well because I that's a conversation that I've been having with a lot of leaders um, just in the background that I come from. Uh, because one of the things that I have been, I, I actually started talking about this when I was a teenager, actually like around like 16, 17. And I said, I feel like in a couple of years, not even a couple, but like in a decade or so, we're going to be faced with this crisis of not having leaders to take on the baton and move these churches forward um because I, I i was i was you know just reminiscing with my father about how a lot of the churches that we have seen that we that we see as great houses that have been built that have impacted communities are about to hit a wall because uh you know, we don't live forever you know like you were hitting it forever um and i have and i have seen some great great men and women of god you know i've sat under some amazing pastors uh bishops and you know evangelists and they're great they can preach they have miracles you know but one of their the one the main fault that they have which i think is that puts an overcast over everything they've done their legacy of as men and women of god is that they never have anyone to come behind them that has has studied that has received impartation to bring that ministry forward i like i think it's great that we have these generals that we can look up to but when god calls them home or whatever whenever they decide to retire on an island somewhere who is actually going to come behind them with and pick up that mantle like like elisha did for elijah and move it forward it's 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 a it's a problem because how are we going to be able to see the church that we love the churches that we we see that have created such that have great history rich history 
it all just falls away because there is not, as Pastor Henry said, discipleship, leadership development. No one is identifying gifts and bringing them out so that that these ministries can move forward into the future. And 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 one of the things I, I, I talked about it with Jordan before, or maybe we didn't. Maybe I just thought about it in my head. Um, but <laughs> I was saying that I, a lot of a lot of younger, you know preachers and ministry gifts are now starting churches or pastoring churches. Um, and I've seen people say, well, it seems like everybody's just starting a church. And I said, that's the part of the crisis, because if there was a proper succession plan, then we wouldn't have to plant all of these churches so that people could actually walk in their gift and do what God called them to do. And then on the back end, there are also a lot of churches that are closing as well, not just because of COVID, but because they are no longer moving in the thing that God is doing now. And so they have fallen out of sync with the spirit of God. And so it's a hard truth to accept and nobody likes to accept it. Nobody wants to talk about it. And I always, I'm always being seen as the bad guy or like the rebellious young preacher because I, I bring it up and I'm saying, what is the, what is the future plan? What is what are we doing after this, after we've had convocation and after we've, we, you, you know, the bishop has been a bishop for like, you know, 50 years. What is the right. plan after that? You know, and right, right, you know, right. it's not about being, you know, you know, being hungry for a platform or hungry for a title or wanting to take over, but it's about the, the future of a church. Every kingdom that you see throughout history, every king is going to prepare that, that heir to come forward and to move the kingdom on because they want that kingdom to stay in their bloodline. Right. And of course, we know that the church doesn't operate like a man made kingdom. However, the concept of succession is a kingdom principle. It is not just something that is not new. It, we don't just do it. We aren't just talking about it now in church growth seminars. This is a kingdom principle. Succession has always been the vehicle by which the kingdom survives through time. Always. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Always. One of the Always. longest living kingdoms in our natural world is the is the is the British kingdom. The monarchs, exactly. the monarch. that monarchy has been around since forever, right? right? Before the birth of Christianity, this monarchy has been alive in that because there's always a constant succession. Right. That 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 mode of succession never died. So now in 2022, there is still somebody sitting on that throne, right? Right, right, right. In our churches. Why we're not just thinking about how many we're sometimes I think we think like about the next Sunday or what's going to happen next Sunday or what's going to happen next year. We need to be thinking about into the next like 20, 30, 40, 50 years past our own lifetimes. Who are we preparing? Who are we raising up to take on the mantle so that the kingdom of God will not have, we won't have to come back to basics every 10 or 15 years and try to do it over again, but we can actually stand on the shoulders of the ones that came before us. Yeah. And I think God is blowing out candlesticks. I think God is removing some of the distortions. I think that those that have started some of these religious strongholds, mm -hmm. right, that have been in some of our cities and in our states or nations, wherever, it has been blocking. The Bible talks about the judgments of God coming a against those shepherds, right? He says, woe to you who have prevented my people from entering to the kingdom. Kingdom was always on the mind of God because he's a king. This has always been about a king, right, and his people. So when we are when we're understanding the church whole thing of the church, King Jesus not going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? He's going to always be. He's always been and he always will be. And because he always has been and he always will be, there will always be an earth without end and a place in the earth that gives expression to who he is because he owns it. And so there are never going to be a time. We are determining our position in participation with what God wants to get accomplished. We are determining are we going to be the ones that's going to be used to keep the flow of secession moving into the earth. So what we are determining on our watch is our yes. We're determining our sacrifice and what we are willing to give of ourselves for the benefit of others. And it takes love and love is kingdom and love is God. And we, until we die to us, the Bible says that we were coming into an era, guys, that we're in now, that we will be void of love. And so when we talk about the void of love, we talk 
about the void of flow, right? We talk about the void of community, unity, gathering, commitment. Go there. Go everywhere. We're talking about the need of having the miraculous release. It's only released through love. You got to sacrifice something in you for benefiting others. You know this, Prophet Jordan, when you're going into those um, meetings of crusades and those missions that you're stepping out in and miracles are manifesting because God tells you prophetically ahead of time to prepare yourself. He knows how many people and lives need to be changed. What you do and your preparation is putting you in the proper place for God to bring a poor out of you to reach people. And your preparation is fasting and praying. That means you got to come off TV. That means you got to stop, you know, can't hang out with your friends. You know what I'm saying? You can't go to, uh, you just can't go out to eat all night and play games all night. You're going to have to put stuff away because this is what the old saints did. We didn't have that many distractions. You guys have so many distractions now. And it's easy for us to get caught up in all the distractions in my time of coming along we didn't have technology like you we couldn't press a button and get information we had to use encyclopedias the britannica right we had to set ourselves i know jordan isn't that something we had to go to the library can y'all believe it we just didn't have things <laughs> i know it i know i know it's hard for y'all to believe it but we had to be in church and we would we didn't have how about we didn't have children's church how about there wasn't a youth ministry how about you had to sit on the pew with your, pew with your parents and they had a belt? And I, I, oh, you understand that, right? She, see, you came out the Jamaican Pentecostal church, girl. You know they didn't play up in there. What? They didn't play in the Jamaican. They still don't play in the Jamaican Pentecostal church. They do not. They, they do, do not, not play. <laughs> you making noise, you're getting pinched right in your side. I think my mom is watching too. That listen, you weren't allowed to play. You had to sit next to your your parents the entire service, and my grandfather would preach for two hours straight, and you had to stay awake. You better come yeah. on. <laughs> and that was teaching. You know what I'm saying? We we throw away everything, but there are some things in that was teaching us principles of discipline. When we talk about discipleship, the disciplined ones, right? We talk about that. They were teaching us. We didn't even know it. we was getting types of discipleship, learning the disciplines to say focus right committed if your if your parents had to open the church and your parents then was in there right right prophet of jordan see if they was opening the church closing the church you were sitting up in there getting what you need to get and whether you wanted to be a part of the church or not like my children and then we had those babies that say i, don't, I ain't going to church no more. i was in church all i got enough god in me to last me to jesus come no he was trying to teach us he was trying to teach disciplines because that's secession and there's many that did not pick it up the mantle there are some that walked away from it, but that secession was being put in place for that. And it depends on how we was introducing that to you guys. Y'all agree? How we were able to introduce that made that become palatable, something that you felt made sense or something you fell in love with, depending on how we brought you into the experience of God. And I can say some of us didn't do a good job. OK, some of us dropped the ball and how we was able to communicate those spiritual realities to you and give you the ability to fall in God because it became work and duty. It was so hard. It put a lot of things before our families and our children. And so for a child, they just saw their parents giving all their time to these people who they would hear talk about their parents in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or, or hear them when they go to their house to play with their kids, talk about and tear down the church and they was in leadership. And our children heard some of that stuff. And so they made up in their heart because they were not mature enough spiritually. They don't want to have nothing to do with the church because they're liars, backbiters. You know what I'm saying? Whether they slept with the people in the church, slept with their daddy, the Mama cheated, you know, all this stuff was going on, right? And so what God is trying to reset us in, guys, as we talk about this, God is trying to reset us back into purity, right? He's trying to make sure we're driving out the things that took the message and distorted it by methods. We got to bring the measure back. The methods may change. The, mes the message doesn't. And so we got people that are preaching a message, but their methods are distorting the message. And so we got to bring balance back into what God said, what he meant by his spirit so we can create and produce a pure model, a pure expression of what church looks like that bring people back to wanting to fall back in love because they see themselves operating with God in it. And so Prophet Jordan, I'm going to pull you in right on there so you can come in and tag me from here and take this to another thought that you have on there. 
Yeah, um, honestly, uh, you and uh, Prophet Chambray, um really said a mouthful. Is kind of like trying to identify where do I go from there. I want to kind of go back to something that Prophet Chambray said um, as it relates to not having people who can step into this succession and step into this um, this mantle. Um, one of the things I personally believe, and the Lord has kind of shown me, and it's not to say that everyone in this particular generation has done this, but I believe that a, a generation has come under the judgment of God. And what do I mean that? I mean by um, virtue of the gener- Gen X generation. You know, obviously we have the baby boomers, the Gen X, the millennials, and then we have the Gen Zs. Um, and I believe that there was a lack of daisiness um, on the Gen X generation that really caused the um, judgment of God to come upon that generation. And there's almost like a deviation in the generation. It's almost like similar to like that of um, of Moses, I'm mean, not of Moses, of, 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 of Eli to Samuel. Um, Samuel should not have had to take on that position that early on in life because there was nobody after Eli. Samuel came into the place of authority at a very young age. And whenever you have a generation whose eyes begin to grow dim and there is no successor, God has to raise up voices at a younger age. And I think that's one of the reasons why you see um, a Chambray or why you see a me or you see other people in my generation who are coming into apostleship, coming into being prophets and not only just apostleship and prophets, but governing and senior apostles and prophets who are really overseeing and preparing um, others that are a little younger than us and even some that are older than us because it's almost as if there's a deviation in the line of succession because a generation has come under the judgment of God. And um, one of the things that God really began to deal with me about is um, the issue of Moses. Um, the reason, and it, it's, it's, it's like this, Moses died before his time. And Joshua did not get the virtue that belonged to him until he stood outside of the walls of Jericho. What do I mean by that? The Bible tells us that God that God spoke to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant is dead. You know, as I, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. But it's very interesting because the full mantle didn't come upon Joshua at the time yet. When Moses stepped into ministry, he had an encounter with the Malach Jehovah stepping out of the fiery bush. He had a face-to-face encounter with the pre-incarnate Christ. But Joshua had not not had a supernatural encounter. He just received the word of the Lord. But yet God said, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. In other words, Joshua was supposed to inherit Moses's mantle. So there's there's some kind of issue going on here. Um, there were no major, major exploits of Joshua until he got to the wall of Jericho because Moses was supposed to lead the children of Israel up until the wall of Jericho. And that was supposed to be the point where Joshua took over because Moses went before his time. Joshua had to step into a position that he had mm-hmm. not yet been placed for. And so mm-hmm. what's happening? Right now with our generation, we are stepping into positions that we have not matured and been graced for because of the deviation of a of a generation that did not want to stay inside of church. And so what happened with Joshua? Joshua came into contact with this mm-hmm. Malachi. He he said, Whose side are you on? I'm on neither side. Um, I'm on my own side. Um, but he, but we, we find out that this was not a, a, mm-hmm. a, a an angel, this was the same being that Moses saw at the fiery bush because the being the being basically says uh, to, to Joshua, you are my ebed, meaning that you are my eternal servant. And so in other words, the Bible says Moses was the ebed or the eternal servant of the Lord. This being responds to Joshua says, you are my ebed, or in other words, eternal servant. So we see that this was the pre-incarnate Christ. So what we are doing right now, God is preparing our generation. If I could ramble for a little longer, he's preparing our generation for our wall of Jericho experience. There is a great confrontation, a great Mm -hmm. contention that's getting ready to come mm-hmm. into the earth it's actually already here um and mm-hmm. what god is doing he's trying to quicken the pace of this generation up to a speed to prepare us for that which we have to contend against in the future and the last thing i'll say about that um the, i t- talked to you about on the phone about this a little earlier apostle cynthia i was talking to you about the spirit of counsel that's coming into the earth. Um, you know, in the prophetic and apostolic movement, we have really mastered the prophetic as it relates to the, um, the word of knowledge, prophecy. We can tell you yesterday, today, and tomorrow in the future. We have really mastered miracle signs and wonders. We know how to open blind eyes. We open. We know how to open deaf ears. But what we have lacked in the apostolic and prophetic movement is the supernatural wisdom of God that he wants to release to the church. And what God wants to release this wisdom to the church for is not just for the sake of us just having prophetic 
prophetic and apostolic panels, but because he wants us to take on the spirit of Daniel, where we can go into these high places and bring advisement to the Nebuchadnezzars and the Belshazzars of our society. And I, I think long enough, the church has been in this place where we kind of just been talking to each other uh, about what God is showing us. And God is really ready to give us dominance and influence at the governmental status. So what God has to do now, he has to take the apostles and prophets into a realm that is going to bring the counsel and the wisdom of God. And I, and I think that's why we have a lot of people who are giving bad prophecy right now, because we're like in the days of Jeremiah. He said, who has stood in the counsel of God? And I noticed that a lot of people, we're not standing in the counsel of God. We're standing in the counsel of church, the counsel of religion. But the reason why we're not coming up with the next answers is because God has yet to release his counsel. But I believe this is the day where God is almost in a sense rapturing apostles and prophets into a place of such encounter and supernatural uh, uh, degree that we're going to come back not only with the, the information, but the counsel on how to aim the information in this next era. So then what the counsel, what does the counsel of God looks like to you? How do we help people understand what is that coming into the council? What does that look like? Well, I would say the counsel of God is the divine wisdom of God. It's God's strategy coming into the mouths of men. Um, and I, I would say uh, we've been really, really accustomed to the pulpit and to preaching and, and churchiness and things of that nature. But this next dimension of counsel, it's going to come from us sitting at tables with people of influence. And it's going to, um, the best person I can give the example for is uh, the prophet Deborah who sat under the palm tree and she began to give counsel to the general on how he was to overcome that army. And so God's counsel is a counsel that we may not necessarily have obtained by natural sources, but it's mm -hmm. God's divine wisdom that we have obtained by virtue of spending time in his presence. He's going to give us ideas and strategies um, in areas that we have no previous experience because it's not supposed to be out of our flesh. It's supposed to be supernatural in its origin. Okay, right. So then we're dealing with the seven spirits, right? Yes, ma'am. We're dealing with the seven spirits that are the power spirits around the throne of God. And so what we're going to see now is those spirits, that power force, being released because we're going to need, we need the spirit of counsel, the spirit of wisdom, right? We need those spirits now that God have always set to be used and be utilized. When we start finding ourselves falling away, God begins to release. We begin to feel winds, right? That are blowing, that are coming from the throne of heaven. And it begins to set things back into divine order. Um, it arrests, you know, uh, Moses had that encounter with fire, one of the elements that God used to get his attention in the earth. You know, we talk about fire and when God is getting ready to cause and he is causing by his spirit things to be awakened back into the hearts of his people. And I think we need to activate people back to even having uh, getting an entrance to go back to to prayer, to prayer, to sit in that space where we can hear God. We don't pray. Everybody is able to click on to get uh, ministries. Uh, we can we can get we can copycat people notes. We can get press a button, right, uh, uh, Pastor Henry? We can press a button and we can download um, and regurgitate what we've heard somebody said that we be begin to take ownership of, but it was not birthed out of a place in us with God, and that's why we're not getting all like you said earlier. There's some things that we're not getting in proper transference and succession because things are being aborted. They're being interrupted, right? Uh, God gave me this word about the spirit of assassination. And then we start hearing about these people being assassinated. Uh, even when I was in London talking about these spirits that were coming. And so God is trying to set us back in that place of counsel that we're able to hear from him and get the counsel of heaven back into us by the spirit of God sitting at the feet of God. That he now begins to give us access into those places that we can't get, get into, except that we find favor with God through obedience, right? And submission, that he can trust us to be able to operate in these things. And so as much as people are listening and the generations that are here gathering, I'm gonna tell you right now, I know one thing I know, it's by the Holy Ghost, okay? It's the Holy Spirit of God that has equipped all of us to do what we do. We can we can make all we can take all the dictionaries that have been written in the word in the world and we can take words from them to articulate something that sounds so wonderful. Paul learned this. He said, honey, it's not in all my eloquent articulation. He said, I don't come into you in none of that. But I come to you in the power and in the demonstration of this, the God I know. And so there's sometimes you got to put away trying to convince people intelligence. 
that you got to come to the place and say, get back on the altar. You know, we're going to know we ain't even talking. We just, I don't need to talk to you. You don't need to talk to me. Just get back to the place of prayer so you can first fall back in love with God, that you can really encounter his presence and feel that when you are not with it, you need him. And no matter what you try to do, you feel void of that if you're not in it. It's the Holy Ghost. You know, I'm old school. It's fire on the altar. You know, it's old school Pentecostal Holy Ghost revivals where we can get people back to getting infused with that spirit of God again. He'll download us intelligence. But I'm telling you, because it's coming out of a realm of the spirit that's operating out of the prophetics, which is the realm of spiritual and supernatural, right? It's supernatural equipping. And so we can't do this any longer outside of just trying to run our nation, the places in which God assigned us out of just doing church or just being those that go to church and even be pastors. And we love pastors. We love all of it. But if we don't activate and get the whole body, right, into a place where we can now blow back into them, that place of the fivefold, okay, that full measure of equipping that we're going to need to run in this dark era with these ancient spirits that are coming out of the terrestrials and some that are coming through the celestials. We're dealing with a whole lot of stuff in this era. I'm talking about at our intensive. I think these are not, you know, the conversations that we can sit and have and have you said that they had in the community. There was also arguments, midrash, right? That's what we know that happened in the Jewish community. They had to work out. They sat in those places and they would do the midrashes of trying to now work out their doctrinal or their interpretational differences, right? And coming back to what they believe and they could come in agreement to say, I know this was God. Well, we don't have a credibility. We're losing, when we talk about the prophetic, who's measuring? Where are the fathers? You know what I'm saying? Where are those that can rebuke? You can't even rebuke really today without somebody wanting to sue you, you know? Or they go on Facebook or whatever social media platforms and put you out and talk about you. So when we start talking about parenting, we start talking about a discipleship. There was one person on here, guys, that asked a question that I wanted to ask you all because he said, do y'all think that the next generation is looking for discipleship? Is it open to discipleship? And what's the reception, uh, what is the reception in the panel's experience of discipleship? So there's a question that is being posed tonight about you guys giving your take on discipleship, okay? How does that look? We talked about the count. There's a lot of things we're talking about tonight and we pray that you guys are getting this. We know we can't talk to you all night. Our time is gonna come to a wrap up in a minute. And I want Pastor Henry to jump into this because when we talk about discipleship, they're asking, do you think this generation is interested? Okay, or the next generation is interested in discipleship um, or are they open to the subject or discipleship itself? And if so, what does that look like in, in your scope and what you've experienced? Go ahead with That's us, great. Pastor. You. I think my computer may be acting again. Can you hear me? Okay, here. I switched devices, so I'm exiting on this device. If you're the, Pastor, you know, we need to buy you a new computer. A new, we, need, we need to get you a new laptop. I think we do. I think that would have this one. You are the technology guru, <laughs> and you're coming up Let's, here like this. Now, you know that's the enemy from hell. Look, I've been on calls all day. Never had. An issue, and then I'll jump in here. Again. I mean, this you know. has got to be the enemy. Listen, I have my I came in from my iPad, so if you let me in on that device, uh, then I'll yeah, be able to can't jump. even hear you. Okay, so why don't you go, uh, Prophet Chambray? Why don't you go? Because they're asking this question as you guys posed before. I think we was going into this a little bit as we get ready to wrap up our conversation. But Prophet Jordan, you mentioned this. I think Pastor Henry was talking about discipleship. And that got you excited a little bit, um, Prophet Chambray, and then Prophet Jordan. You know, we, we always excited. Him and I, we just live on the edge. He got so much in him. He reminds me so much of me. We're talking so much because there's so much coming so fast. It's like, oh, oh, oh. but um, Prophet Chambray, can you just um, really address that? Because they're wanting to know, what does that mean to the next generation? I believe that it is the answer to reaching this next generation is discipleship. Um, we are, I believe my generation is, is hungry, is, is, is desiring uh, that relationship with the fathers, with the mothers that will, um, that will educate, not necessarily give a platform, not necessarily, you know, put you out there or put you on, but rather somebody that will just actually teach you how to move and how to uh, stand in this in this time and in this season um, as a young person, as a as a man of God, as a woman of God. Uh, I think that's the answer, really. 
um, that is how you're going to reach this next generation. One of the biggest obstacles that we see, however, comma, uh, with with discipleship in this next in, in this generation is simply um, the the uh, a war with with integrity. I believe that the reason why a lot of young people have stepped away, have kind of moved away from certain relationships, is simply because of because of integrity. Uh, this generation is looking for that authenticity. So wh- wh- who wh- who you are on Sunday on the pulpit has to match who you are everywhere else or else it's going to be a discrepancy and then that trust and that 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 you know that confidence in 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 that discipleship relationship won't really be there but it definitely is the answer i believe that that's how you are going to reach this generation train this generation um move them up and for a lot of people discipleship may look like a big mountain of uh you know really difficult but in actuality um being making yourself open to being an example to being a voice that uh people can glean from is is it does so much you know for this generation i always say that i believe that one of the reasons why i'm able to move as at, at my age in the capacity that i move in is because i I made sure that I gleaned from somebody. Even if you didn't want me around, I was going to be there anyway, right? I made it a point because I knew what I needed and I knew that that person had what I needed. Um, and so that's 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 really the answer. I think a lot, there's a lot of people that try to preach at, that try to, you know, go at this next generation. Um, but the real the real the real thing that they are looking for that they need is that sense of discipleship that sense of relationship they want to know that someone is there that they can reach out to that they can glean from um and that's really how um i believe that this that our system in christianity has been set up um impartation um and being able to pass on that's really what that's really how you're going to um minister to this next generation because that's what they're looking for don't just tell me that this is what it is show me that this is what it is and teach me that this is what it is and so that when it comes time for me to be able to move in that capacity that i don't need to depend on you for it but i can move in it by myself and be of help and be of 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 assistance to somebody else who's coming after me henry unmute yourself We can't hear you, Henry. Can you hear me all right now? Yes. So going back to something Jordan mentioned, truce, I think this falls in that same space. Uh, because Psalms 121 says, unless the Lord build a house, they labor in vain and build it. And then Jesus comes along in the word for son of that discipleship is, is his plan for building the house. That's how he wants to build a church. So I think discipleship has to be a part of it. And I do think the next generation wants it. I just think when it's clear as can be about a topic, the world adopts cultural language to communicate. We call it as mentorship. They're talking about mentorship and that's why they're talking about all these other things. What they're searching for is discipleship. Somebody who will raise me in the way. And it's that understanding, <clears throat> just <laughs> teaching me it's not just teaching me how to do church, but the discipleship is teaching me how to be everything that Christ has delivered different things. And so I think, I think that's a big issue, but here's another question that I think, I think Jordan, you probably have fun with. The bigger question is, is uh, do leaders want discipleship? And, and here's what we talk, uh, as, we, as I work with leaders in churches, when you use the term discipleship, it all feels like a task to too daunting and so now we've shifted to this language of no we want to establish a nature when really all it is is discipleship that is area specific and, and i think we got to discover and we've really got to uncover is understanding that discipleship is the path for create the discipleship if we don't create these these groups of people from which we can going to have these lengthy discussions these lengthy ramifications rather uh here Here's how I say it the churches with assimilating the 5,000 that you reach, then you're going to have no chance that you're called to walk with. 
because the journey starts at the 5,000. So it's taking those groups of people who comes in and says, okay, okay, let me take you from the 5,000 to the 500. Let me take you from the five that can be sent. Let me take you from the 72 to the 12 and then to the three and then to the one. And we have 5,000 caliber people and we call, call them the 12 when they have the foundation or the ability to help us carry what we're about to carry. And so I do think that we're going to be the journey forward. Whether we like it or not, we've got to get back to it. Uh, the big thing is going to be leaders. Can we carry the weight of having to walk with, with people a next generation is searching for? We are the generation that grew up in isolation. Like Jordan talked about, I'm on the border between Gen X and millennials. So I could go either way, depending on which day of the week you catch me. Latch key kids, because we were one of the first generations Generations to have two parents outside of the home, home by ourselves, cooked our own food, did our own stuff, so and so on. And so here's one of the things in generation is that the overreaction to isolation is intimacy. And so I think that for intimacy, they're not going to be satisfied with knowing us as a ministry. They want to know us as people. They want to know us as leaders. And, uh, and really have an opportunity to beings that really matter, help them be better husbands and fathers. If they're struggling with their marriages, they don't have the help in the church. If they're struggling as parents, they don't have the bandwidth uh, to come and do the things in the house with them, uh, uh, kind of navigate through those things because they too are a part of the discipleship. Now you see, okay, this is good. I'm, I'm jumping, I had to, my, my computer shut down for just a whole minute. And so I had to try to get the stuff back going. I mean, all kind of stuff happens, right? Um, but I was listening to you guys. I was hearing from my phone. And so I was listening because even as we talk about discipleship and some of us, we've been pastoring and doing ministry now for 21 years, um, full-time in ministry as senior leaders ourselves. But we were in ministry before then, you know, we were youth pastors. Uh, my husband and I, we started out as youth pastors. And from youth pastors, even before that, when my husband was playing professional basketball, I was young when I got also activated and knowing the prophetic call. I was 25 years old, knowing that it was upon my life. You know, God began to open up things for me to speak. I couldn't hold it. You know, it was like fire shut up in your bones. So I had to tell somebody every time I walked to the supermarket, anybody I met, I needed to tell them what God was saying. At that time in church, there was not I think that what was in church and what was set up in some type of discipleship that people felt they were doing, they created. They had from Sunday school to, um, you know, uh, we built a lot of, let me say this. You had Sunday school, you had what Bible study, you had sometimes people, depending on what denomination they were part of, they had all different type of vocational training and stuff going on, right? All kind of stuff going on at church. But I'm telling you this is what I'm saying is that as we've evolved into this time, people thought they were creating type of discipleship. But what I'm hearing you all say is that what is involved in discipleship and what's communicated to you guys is a type of relationship. So when we're trying to build anything that is giving rules in it, right, that is trying to get people to buy into it, especially in leadership, you have to create relationships. And what we know and what we do know now and what I've come to really understand up under apostleship is, is discipleship, leadership, and eldership. And so when we start talking about eldership, discipleship, and leadership, that's some of the things we need to be focusing on in this era of building those things strong through relationship that people can buy back into God. You know what I'm saying? Buy back into the need of why they need to sacrifice a Wednesday night, uh, you know, a Sunday morning, a Tuesday, whatever that is for the cause of Christ. Christ. I know when I was coming along, they made church at that time. It looked exciting. You know, people was going. We were swinging from the chandeliers, conferences happening everywhere. People, things were happening in the church I was a part of, okay, because we were moving and probably I was strongly uh, in, in word of faith. And so church was moving at that time. Prosperity, people getting blessed. We saw the word coming alive and we did see measures of uh, people that was operating in the supernatural. We saw prophetic moves that were happening up under the word of faith, but not to where we're seeing it and we will see it in the future. So discipleship 
relationship and what I'm hearing and what everybody is needing to know. God is saying we got to come back to relationship. And that's the biggest struggle we're having, guys, because we don't trust each other. We've been hurt. People have been broken. Uh, people just, uh, you know, we, we just mess up. The younger generation don't trust the uh, older generation. And I think I heard you saying that, Prophet, Prophet Chambray, you know, how do we get back to a place where we can we can receive, you know? So he said, do you think they're willing to have discipleship? Can you sit with us? Do you trust us to not just pour into you and never really, um, this is what happened. We keep teaching you, but never bringing you into nothing. You know what I'm saying? Am I ever going to be qualified for any type of thing? You know what I'm saying? That I can do. And that's only because those are the models we saw, you know, that it was pastor strong. It was lording over, or should I say somewhere through fear, people begin to now do away with the movement of the church, which were the apostles and prophets. Um, and so mainstream church became that, that was pastor strong. And so in pastoring, you learn not how to be uh, a, so much of a relational person in some cases. You're trying to mend sheep and give them what they need. So you're supplying them with food. You're saying, y'all need this and y'all, I know what y'all need. I'm assessing. Y'all need this, that, and that, and that. I'm your father. I'm your parent. Depending on how you see parenting, I'm going to give you what you need. Don't ask me a whole lot of questions. Do what I say, do. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, people saying, what well, I'm trying to do as you do. You're not doing what you say. <laughs> And so it puts it presented a distorted version, right? I heard you say something, but I'm trying to do something different. <laughs> and so we found out as y'all generation came along, I can't trust. So the breach has been so, uh, I mean, this thing has been so widened with our relationship of trust to build back something that God can now find back qualifiable for him. And I think when we come back to understanding, we're not building ministries of monuments unto ourselves. But what we are building is the ministry of Jesus Christ for the global world, right? To be able to partake into what heaven is doing back into the earth. That's when we're going to see things operate at a whole nother place. He didn't come for skin. He came for souls. And we can tell down our denominational differences, guys. And we can come back into the one mind of God in his love that God died for people. And until we love people again, we'll never do ministry again. And so this is not about getting a platform to make yourself famous or find yourself getting a big house and having money. Because I believe a generation have seen many pastors on television in many places that they came into this because they have charisma and they are genius and they're smart and they figured this is the greatest way to manipulate, to get money. So I'm gonna use manipulations and I'm gonna work through sorceries of different types of spirits to create spiritual phenomenons that God is not in. So we have to be, all of this stuff is happening in our era. <laughs> All of this is happening in our time. But he said, a wicked generation seeketh after such, right? They're looking and running behind. So I believe with you, it's not just in the signs and wonders and miracles. We're going to have to operate and understand that people are nasty to people. If you don't know how to treat people, if you don't have common courtesy, right, with people, then I'm going to question where you're getting your authority from to do what you do. Because everything that's backing some of the stuff we see is not coming from God. So we need those type of mature measures, uh, or should I say mature mantles that are able to know because they spent time with God to look at something and say, this is not God. I know it looked like a dog, but it's not a dog. You know what I'm saying? I know it looked like a duck, but it's not a duck. And to call out of this thing what it's not, so we can now stop deceiving people through the operations of what looks appealing and what looked like is us God, but it's sabotaging and destroying the lives of too many people because God is not in it. And so we're on a mission. And I pray that this is our mission tonight, that those of you that are listening to me, that tonight we're calling back purity. We're calling back the standard of holiness and all the things that we're talking about tonight. It is for us to merge together. We need every person that has now been awakened to any type of call. If you feel like God has called you, I'm telling you right now, you were on the pole and you felt like God is saying, it's time to get my life together. You might've been a drug dealer. You may have been a drug user. I don't know what you were doing, but I'm telling you, you're qualified in God. I don't care if you was the executive of a CEO or a corporation. It doesn't matter. Outside of Christ, we don't have nothing. We can't be nothing. We will never tap into the fullness of who we are, period. But I'm telling you, the one that we see the least likely will become the most likely. And you better be careful how you discredit people, because I'm telling you, God is raising up people and they're coming from everywhere. He says the first should be last and the last should be first. So we're seeing a shift. 
We're seeing people come back into the law first. We're seeing God bringing things back to his first perspective. And the power of God is getting ready to be demonstrated in the earth like never before. Even if he's got the cause, the rocks to cry out. Come on. The trees are going to prophesy. The wind is going to tell you I'm in participation with creation. And if you're not with what God is doing, the wind is going to take you out. Amen. The water is going to flood over the earth. Why? Because God has given an assignment to water to cleanse and purify. And if you're out of place, you may get taken out with the flood. I don't know. But he said, get in the ark of covenant, get in the place of safety, get in the place of protection. And I send this word out to your generation as I am the mother that have given birth to this generation. I birth millennials. I kids are in their forties all the way down to 23. So I'm telling you right now, we need you. We need you. We got to work together. There is a real call of God that we bring back proper balance. You have many questions. There are some things we have answers to. And what we don't, we can pray and seek God together so we can get it. But there is a generation ahead, the next 40 year cycle of generations that are waiting for us to replenish, to bring back, right? That place of recovery in the earth of what was lost, like you said, the judgments, Prophet Jordan, of God through a prior generation that many things was lost through because there was not proper measurement, maybe proper discipleship, nor relationship, right? It was a whole lot of religion. It was a whole lot of doing, but we weren't dying. And we have to die now to us to get what God wants to get accomplished. I thank you all for being on here with me tonight. I want to say to all of those people that have been in here listening with us, I know our time is like, oh my Jesus, it's come to such an end, but this has been an amazing conversation. I wanted to talk about, just can y'all just for a few seconds, you got to hit this before we go. Just talk about this just for a few seconds. We ain't going to do long. We're just going to hit this. Talk about how does ministry remain relevant and pure in this time? How does it remain relevant? Prophet Jordan, can you just go? How does it remain relevant and pure? Because sometimes we are seeing some of the things that are so not appealing to a generation that understood that you had to live in some type of lifestyle, a modesty, right? There had to be moderation. There had to be a standard for something. We understand God has standard. And so the only reason we saw some people doing some things because they had no other means. That means that you had to dress like that. You had no more clothes. That means that God had to use what you had to get the message to where it has to go. But these are not the days that we're in that yet, that we're not able, right, to put on proper attire, that we're not able, right, to know that we're in a governmental sanctioned position, that we should look like officials, professional in duty to do what we're doing for God, that we don't misrepresent him or construct the message with our method, right? So how do we remain relevant and pure in this era? Go for it, Prophet Jordan. Um, yeah, I would say one of the biggest things is um, taking on the spirit of the sons of Issachar. That's the first thing I would say. That's how we remain relevant. Um, um, so in other words, if we adopt a prophetic spirit to know what's coming down the pipeline, as Chambray alluded to earlier, we'll understand that we can blend into this culture and keep our relevance while maintaining our purity. The whole thing is to understand what is going on in this generation without imitating and mocking it. Ah, that's and, good. And so if we, and, and here's the thing, if we can imitate what we see coming out of the spirit realm and what we see coming out of, out of, out of heaven and coming out of the realm of the spirit, we will maintain our relevance because nothing happens in the natural without first happening in the spirit. So if we begin to um, uh, set our gaze and, and set our affections on things that are above, we will be, as Chambray alluded to earlier, literally on the cutting edge. Um, I, I, and I tell people, this is why the church is going to invade every facet of society. We should not be trying to catch up to what the fashion designers of the world are, are creating because we prophetic designers, people who have gazed in the spirit. Woo! The next clothing is supposed to look like so we can know how to remain on the cutting edge. Because I'll tell you this, you won't show up to Nova Hub Church in a three-piece suit and my people listen to you. Me, I might be more likely to listen to you because I come from an era and I come from a church where mighty men and women of God wore three-piece suits. But if you come to Nova Hub Church, they're more likely to listen to you if you dress a little more like them. But the way we jump ahead of that is we gaze into the spirit. We, we, we take on the spirit of the sons of Issachar, but we don't enter into the place of imitation. And we can go back to the scripture that says, be not conformed to this world. That word world is the word eon or age or time right. 
or time sphere. And I think oftentimes we have to understand that we don't approach society from the from the time or the age that we are in. We approach it from an eternal perspective. That's so we good. don't conform to time. We conform to eternity. And that's how we remain pure, even in our relevance. We also have to understand what is God demanding out of us? Because how religion slips into it, religion slips into um, us. And we, we, you know, listen, religion is what causes us to lose our relevance. When we adopt religion, we lose re relevance. That's good. So, we, so when, we, when we ask God, what are you demanding out of us in this time and in this season? All of a sudden, he'll tell us what really what we need to be doing. So when we slip into religion, we'll say, God wants me to wear a skirt. All the time, right? To you women. Um, if we slip into religion, God wants me to wear a suit. That's the best way I can describe it from a clothing perspective. Or we can say something in, along the lines of God wants me in church seven days a week. Or um, God wants me to have this kind of music. And, we'll, and we don't understand that's really a religious spirit imitating the spirit of God. And so if we can take on a, a, a progressive spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, he's progressive, not in the liberal sense of the form where sin, sin not being sin, but he's progressive because he's always going to try to move us forward. But if we take on an eternal perspective, we will keep our purity and we will keep our, um, our relevance. And that's good because I think what God is doing is hitting all the idols. He's hitting all the things we've hidden behind and that we've not allowed him to be seen because we hide behind clothes. We hide, you know, we've, we've hidden behind buildings and walls and all of this stuff. God's tearing down all the idols in our societies that have made us now believe that God was in that and God wasn't in us. And so I don't care what you put on. If you're carrying the message of Christ in your belly and you really have an anointing, people are going to hear that. You just don't want to take away from the message and nothing you wear and nothing you do that causes people to be distracted, right? Or distorted from the pure message of God. What are you saying, Pastor Henry? Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll come to level for the, the church. I think the church has to be aware of who it's reaching. You have to be aware, you know, it's, I think we have to, in some cases, we have to have the call of, the, but we, we have to rediscover Discover the mantle of the local church to say who's in my neighborhood and know who those people are. I think there are some churches who could completely shift their culture if they study of who was around them. If they just study what the issues were around them and begin issues, I believe they'll see it. People will never outgrow their need for healing. People will not of their life. That's why when Jesus walked up on people, he was able to to assess what they need in person and heal their Amen. own. He walked to them and healed the issue they had and on the way gospel and that brought spiritual transformation. And I think the church has to get back to the same thing to get the culture. If you look at the world, you want to be relevant, have a good marriage ministry right now. Like marriages are at a high a clip. So I think we need to be able to say, okay, look, let's go help. People are struggling to raise a suicide rate in home homes is through the roof, especially through fatherless homes. That's you why we much need power. Yeah. So, so yeah. we got to go in there and we got to take this authority, this power, and we've got to know where to aim it. I think it's, it is a terrible travesty to have a power not aim it at the right, right thing. And I think the church needs to discover what has God called us to aim our local demographic. And I think that's one of the ways we stay relevant. Okay, what about you, Chambray? I think one of the most important things that we need to have is a prophetic mind as far as uh, staying rele um, relevant, having a prophetic mind, having a spiritual mind. Uh, Jesus said, let this <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Not only having um, the same tenacity as Christ, but also having the same mindset and mind as Christ. The way that we think, the way that we process information, the way that we go about doing things has to be done from a spiritual mindset. Uh, a lot, one of the reasons why many of us are, are, are missing things and the many, the reason why a lot of us are not where we need to be as far as the church is concerned is because we are not, we do not have the right mind. We think about things the wrong way. We think, 
think we don't approach things from the way that God would approach them or the way that God would perceive certain things, but we are trying to do so from a carnal nature. We're trying to do so from a religious place. And so if we would begin to think the way that God thinks, God is a spirit. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. We need to adapt a spiritual mindset to know what is happening spiritually, how That's and it. how move in certain things in a spiritual mindset it is it is it is so you'll be so surprised well maybe probably not but like a lot of our churches are very spirited very charismatic but they are not spiritual we do we we even That's what i'm talking about healed are not spiritual we do not, not know how to how to interact and how to communicate with the realm in the realms of the spirit. We don't know how to do any of those things. Like, and that's the reason why we are so we're so confused. We're using gimmicks. We're trying to use all type <laughs> of things to get people to come. But the re, but the fact of the matter is is that the Bible says that no man comes on to Jesus unless the spirit. And so if we do not have a, a, a spiritual mindset. If we do not know how to think like, like, like the spirit of God thinks, if we don't have that spiritual mindset, they were always going to be in the, on the backside of whatever God is doing. We're always going to miss it. We have to have a spiritual mindset. We have to That's be good. in the place where we can think the right way. The, if we That's can good. think the right way, then the church would be so much further. We will be able to, we, not only will we be seeing miracle signs and wonders regularly, not just when we have revival, Bible, but all the right. time, but all we would we would be able to be meet needs without people even having to say anything. Come on, you know what I'm like and and we would be able to meet needs and be able to be stand in gaps in places without people av having to ask us or demand the church to step up and do something. We would be in a place where we would be operating literally out of the realms of the spirit. And so, whatever we would need, whatever I would, and I tell my churches all the time, I say, whatever you need from God, whatever blessing, whatever whatever you need, all of that is already in the realms of the spirit. The cattle on the thousand hills are not here. here. They're in the realms mm -hmm. of the spirit. So if you're mm -hmm. spiritual, you know how to access things in the spirit and bring them into the natural. And that is what the church should be. It should be an em uh, should be an embassy to the realm of the spirit. And so where people can come and be able to have a pathway into spiritual things because we are the ones, we are the gatekeepers of such. And so that is really mm -hmm. how we stay relevant and how we stay on the cutting edge. How we remain pure is when we and when we decide inwardly and make an inward decision that we're going to fear God again <laughs> and that we're going to we have the, that the fear of the Lord which is the beginning of wisdom would be on the inside of us again I believe one of the reasons why we have so much scandals why people are just doing all type of crazy things and people are just you know have no respect for the house of God anymore is because we have lost the fear of the Lord if we can get the fear of the Lord That's back it get the respect of people back there was a time where people respected the church now the church is being disrespected on all sides because we have lost our integrity because we don't want to live right anymore if we could have the fear of the lord where we would be cognizant of his presence and his and his and his sight that looks upon good and evil if we were cognizant of that then we would we would be walking circumspect circumspect to the word of god and people would begin to respect the church again amen i believe that drop the mic that's it we've heard it all <laughs> Um, everything that has been said that need to be said, some of the things I wanted to talk about, because you all have just talked about how we need to go and possess these mountains. You know, we got to come back into relevancy. I know that we're building a lot of things and birthing a lot of things, but God wants to put his mind back. He wants his mind to go back to possessing what is already his. The enemy doesn't own the mountains. They're God's. OK. And so what we're doing is that God is reestablished. He's taking the prophetic mind of his and going to possess back what he already owns. And that is the world. That is every industry of the world. OK. He's ruling over the governing systems of the world. So he's taking down kings. OK of false kingdoms. And this is what we're going to see happening in this hour of this takeover. We're going back to teach people now, how do you walk in at that prophetic edge and stay now relevant in purity to go, go do what you're called to do in the place in which God has assigned you. It doesn't have to be that you're in the building of a church or in the pulpit, but your pulpit is wherever God placed you. You are taking the word of God. You're going to tell people what God said, and you're going to bring God's original thoughts back to whatever industry, whether it's education, whether it's science, whether it's you're called now into the marketplace and in business, entrepreneurship, wherever that is, it may be in government, but what you need as a believer prophetically, you need the prophetic mind. 
mind of God to be able to go speak back into those places that is the void of his spirit to bring his spirit life into, to get out of it what belongs to God. You're not even getting everything you're supposed to get right now in the mountain you're ruling in. They're writing you a little check. It is the mountain God called you to go and possess. Take the spirit of God and draw out of that dark place, bring light out of it and get everything you're supposed to have in it and bring back God's perspective so he can rule the mountains back over the earth. Amen. And so we're going to be talking about that guys, September 1st to the 4th. I know that we're going to have you here with us, uh, Prophet Jordan and then Pastor Henry and Chambre. We pray that you guys can come down and be with us. Uh, we got to get you down in here, but I pray that you can get your team or whoever's operating with you, those prophetic and apostolic people. This intensive is going to be so important and so necessary for us to map out what is coming in the next, we're talking about year 2050, 2030. These are going to be very important time periods of what we're living in and how we need to be prepared for them. OK, we don't want to just keep preaching and preaching and preaching and not preparing people for what it is God is doing in the now so that we are not behind it. We are ahead of it. OK, because we should be leading out. And so God wants us to get equipped. He wants us to be knowledgeable. He wants us to be trained. He wants us to be activated. But more than that, he wants us to develop a community of relationships where we make sense in our nest that we can out of that become those embassies. Go back and establish them in our cities and our regions that we can create strongholds in the world that God can operate out of. Amen. And so September 1st through the 4th here in Deerfield Beach, Florida, I think Pastor Henry, where they're going to register? CT, you go there. You click the link. You can register. Sign up your whole team. Bring everybody. I know it's going to be absolutely everybody. Exciting. Somebody just posted in the comments. It's ctglobal.academy uh, spot before they fill up. Uh, I can't wait. If this is what it's going to be like, I can't for Oh, it's going to be so much more. We do a lot of hands-on equipping. We activate. We get people now to begin to have those type of conversations. When we, I've gone to meetings forever and say, I don't just want to talk about ABC. I want you to help me now be imparted but engaged. I want you to help me to know what that means to be a part of that community and how I fit in it. We need to identify our realms. Where are we called? I know I'm a prophet. What type of prophet am I? I know I'm an apostolic, I'm an apostle, I'm a, or am I just apostolic? All of these things people have not known. So how do we do proper discipleship when we've not been discipled ourselves? And so we have to make sure that we're able to raise up and we're bringing in master teachers, those who know how to establish this realm and bring people into it by being disciple so they can go out and disciple others. That is proper secession. We have to stay in places of training, cultivating, and developing and learning. It's never going to end. God is forever. He's, uh, Shambra, you said something. You know, it's the mind of God that if you stay in that relevancy, you'll always be on the cutting edge. You know, you'll always be ahead of everything. You will know the fashions, what the design, like you said, Prophet Joy. You will know in education mountains what God wants to establish to his next generation or what has to be passed and what can't, what should be written and what we have to do away with because it holds back to the healthiness of our communities and our society that measure back something for God. And so that's what we're going to have to do. If we want the world and God has called us in this world to hold it, we're going to have to get the mind of God, right, to be able to do it with. That's what we do all day long. So we want you to come and join us September 1st to the 5th. Jesus people proclaim. I want you to go on and register at CL. Is it C? Y'all don't, don't let me mess up. C. Okay. C CL. <laughs> don't be laughing at me, Prophet Jordan. <laughs> CT Global. CT Global Academy. Um, you guys can go and register. See, they set up all this stuff. Um, what is it here? <laughs> ctglobal.academy. Okay, ctglobal.academy. Somebody put it out there for people to get it. We can laugh, but I need you to register. I want you guys to be a part. Come and join us. If you can't get here in person, we'll take you online. We have everything set up to make sure you get the hybrids. You can get also training equipped, but there is nothing like okay. being in this place. Everybody that comes, they're coming back because they've never experienced anything of this full potency of power of training, cultivating, developing, and community, amen, and relationships that are built out of people who think alike, amen, people who are called to operate in these places together. So please join us. We got a power team set up for you guys. You will not be disappointed. We got every age, every group, everybody. We're talking about the mountains, getting out of this matrix, getting unplugged, and coming into truth.
Amen. So you can go and sit in your place to rule in your region. We love you guys. I thank all of you all for being on here with us tonight. Prophet Joy, get off the phone so you can pray. I need you to pray for the people before we leave tonight. That's my nephew. I love him. Uh, I want you to pray for the people before we leave tonight. Just begin to speak a word over them tonight, Prophet Jordan. Whatever you're hearing in your spirit, let's just seal this tonight. This was so significant, this conversation. We don't want none of this to fall, to be misconstrued, to be taken where the enemy tried to make it into something that it wasn't. It was a pure conversation. Let's leave it in the pure places it was. If you can take something from it and grow from it, praise God. If it did nothing for you, leave it where it is. Let somebody else pick it up. But we do know our assignments is to make sure we keep people being able to hear what God is saying so we can bring this whole thing back together so he can get the glory. Amen. Prophet Jordan, can you really pray and release something as we close out tonight? Go ahead. Yes, Father, I thank you for this broadcast. I thank you for um, the various speakers that spoke on it. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, let not our words fall to the ground, Father. I'm asking, Abba, that as um, they receive this word, that they would receive an impartation that was associated with this word, Father. I thank you now, Abba, that you are enlightening the minds of those that were watching God and bringing them into the place of wisdom and revelation. Father, I thank you that there was a release of the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that they would know the hope of their calling in the name of Jesus. Abba, I'm asking now, God, that you would begin to take confusion and turn it into insight, God. Begin to take discombobulation and bring it into organization, Father. Begin to take those various places, God, that seemed as if they were uh, not sure and those places where it seemed that the light of relevant revelation was dimmed. And I'm asking, God, that you would brighten the light, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that you'd begin to take us into the avenues of the Spirit and the the channels of the spirit that we yes, need Jesus. to go for the next season. Father, I thank you that the door is indeed open as it relates to understanding who we are and what we are supposed to do. Yes, Father, Jesus. I thank you that through this broadcast that you are stirring up fresh mandates in the name of Jesus, that people would understand who, yes, they, are called to affect, who they are called to touch in Jesus' name. <clears throat> and I just hear the spirit of the Lord saying that this is the season where many of you that are watching, you're going to really begin to understand how your mantle and how your spirit and how your anointing begins to work. The Lord says, I'm I'm taking a lot of you into a season where I'm going to almost in a sense uh, deconstruct your mantle before your very eyes, but I'm going to begin to show you the inner workings and the inner networks um, as your, uh, as to how your mantle begins to work. And the Lord says, this is the season where I reverse misidentification. For the Lord says, many of you have been uh, watching and you've almost in a sense come alive by virtue of listening to us and said, wow, I thought that I was called to this area and I thought I was called to that area, but the Lord says many of you in this room have been misidentified as it relates to what you and who you are called to be. But the Spirit of the Lord says He's reversing that uh, that re that misidentification of your gift, your anointing, your mantle, your metron, your jurisdiction, and He's bringing you into the place of proper alignment as it relates to who you are called to be and how you are supposed to perform it and how you are supposed to function. And the Spirit of the Lord even says today, I am changing the language of my people in this next season. Of the Lord says, not, not, not only do I give you the tongue of yesterday, but not only do I give you the tongue of today, but the Lord says, I give you the tongue of tomorrow. I give you the tongue of the future. Yes. The Lord says, well, many of you have, have, have had an inarticulance as it relates to what you see coming on the pipeline. Not only will I give you the foresight as to what is happening, but I will give you the articulation as it relates to what I am saying in the earth next, says the real Lord. And the Lord says, this is the season where I take you from the middle and I put you on the cutting edge, says the Spirit of the Lord. But the Lord said, this is the season where I'm going to begin to identify the next gifts and the next callings and the next people that I am bringing to the front. The Lord says, do not fight me when I bring you from the back to the front. For have I not said in my word that the last shall become first, the first shall become last. There is a divine switching that is happening in the earth right now. And the Lord says, even in the days to come, you should begin to see, hallelujah, the switching of kings, the switching of celebrities, the switching of entertainers, the switching of governmental officials. The Spirit of the Lord says, I am switching preachers. I am switching everything in the earth right now. And the Spirit of the Lord says, you shall be see, begin to see the uprising of sudden voices that will seem as if they came out of nowhere overnight. And the Lord 
Lord says, even by way of the night, you shall see the passing of other people. For the Lord says, even between now and the end of the year, you will begin to see the sudden death of celebrities and kings in the earth. For the Lord says, this is the great sign that I am dusting off the sea. I will shake my body. I am dusting off the sea. I am dusting off the seats of the earth. For the Lord says there has been a contamination upon the seats and the thrones of the earth. But the Lord says I am dusting off these seats and I am making way for a pure and a holy generation that will begin to occupy the high places of society. For behold, I say unto you, I am upgrading you to the upper echelon of society. The Lord says do not fight the new thing that I'm doing. Did not my word declare that I shall do a new thing and you shall see it spring forth. For the Lord says you are that springing forth in the earth. For if you have watched this and your baby has leaped by virtue of watching this broadcast. This is a sign unto you that you are the thing that I'm springing forth in the earth. For the Lord says, I have made you to be fresh water. I have made you, hallelujah, to be the cleansing agent into the earth. And the Lord says, not only shall the earth be affected, but even the second heaven for this, this is even the season where I am going to begin to shift principalities. For the Lord says, one region was known for one thing, but it shall be known for a complete other thing. For the Lord says, even the demonic powers and princes are beginning to move and make way for angelic princes that shall begin to occupy these spaces in the second heaven but the lord says you will not only invade the earth systems but you shall in, you shall begin to invade the heavenly system said the spirit of the lord my god somebody need to lift up their hands and receive the word of the lord for surely that is the word of the lord my god yes god we thank you we bless you we honor you. Oh, God, have your way tonight. We just receive of you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Prophet Shambray, you had something to tag with that? Or are we good? Amen. Amen. We're good? Amen. 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 Okay. I believe God has spoken. I believe the word of the Lord has gone forth. Prophet Jordan, thank you for the word that you've released. I receive it. I know it's God. And I pray that others have been able to receive it as well. God is moving. It has been great. Thank you all for joining us tonight, sitting in this. We want you to share it. You know, we want you to take this and set this into circles. Have a, You guys have a conversation from this conversation. Go take it back into your groups and talk about some of the things we're talking about. Let's get awakened. Let's have questions. Let's come back into these platforms so we can read back engage in conversations and build relationships relationships. We love you. We're with you. There's many with you. There's more with you than it's against you. So we love you. We thank God for you. Prophet Chambray, thank you so much for coming on with me tonight. I love you, sweetheart. It's a wonderful thing to connect with you. Prophet Jordan, thank you. You know you're my nephew. I love you. Let's beat up on the devil. I'll see you soon here in, um, at our church here for the intensive. You're going to be with us, and it's going to be amazing. And Pastor Henry, thank you for doing who, what you do. I'm just, I don't even understand why your technology didn't do what it was supposed to do tonight. You know, you, you, you're just messing up, man. But we were able to hear you. We got it in tonight. And thank you so much for um, being on the platform with us tonight because your voice is so important and what you're carrying is so powerful. We, we just rebuke the enemy for what he comes in. You're, te you're teaching and training and building and helping pastors come into understanding how to get things in place for the next. You're going to be with us. You're going to be doing a powerful session that's going to bring them into the now sound of technology and moving into the new era of what's ahead in the rhythm of heaven, knowing what it is God is speaking through those new frequencies. So we love you all. We thank God for you. We're going to chime out. We're going to do it in five, right? I'm going to count it down to five. And then I love all of you guys. Thank you all for being on tonight. May y'all be blessed. Amen. Amen. Five, four, three, two, one. We out. God bless y'all.